Practices shown in this video can be dangerous, so don't do this at home. I do not condone any violence against people or animals, and this video is just about a fantasy scenario and only serves entertainment purposes. Let's talk about the design of this. Why did I make it the way I did? So first of all, the handle. The handle is tilted forward, that's its most prominent feature. And the main reason I did it because I think it looks cool, and also because I think it looks uh, a lot more aggressive with that angle going on. But it also has some function. For example, if we are uh, talking about fighting uh, a medieval horde of Vikings or uh, post-apocalyptic raiders that have shields, if this is my shield and um, this is coming at me, then here we already have the blade almost hitting me. Well, if it was straight, then the blade would be just here. So it gives a couple more centimeters reach when reaching around shields. That's number one. Number two, the way it just feels in the hand is it just wants to go forward. I don't know if it actually packs more of a punch as if it was straight, but it certainly feels that way. It just feels like extremely devastating. Oh, ch check out the whoosh sound, by the way. Cool, huh? Hope you can hear it on the camera. So, it just feels extremely devastating in the hand. Probably on channels like Scholar Gladiatoria or Skelligrim or Shed Diversity, you will certainly find a more in-depth discussion of blades and uh, other kinds of weapons with a forward tilt. Um, they did exist historically, the Kukri is one example. Uh, I'm not actually sure axes with a forward tilt like this existed. It might be because it would be uh, more difficult to make, it, so it might be for economical or technical reasons that they didn't make them, or maybe it just really doesn't add that much of an advantage. I do not really know, so I won't comment on that further. <laughs> the reasons why I made it, I have named. Now. I also got, after posting the video about how I made this, comments saying that uh, the blade is the wrong way around, so that the teeth are pointing the wrong way around and should be pointing down. And the reasons given for that by the people who commented it uh, were basically, uh, yeah, it will be more dangerous to the zombie that you're uh, fighting and uh, it will tear the flesh and when the saw blade is operating, this is the direction the teeth are facing to saw into the wood. Gotta really watch out with this here. Almost poked myself. So, uh, yes, I agree. This is the way that the teeth are facing. So if it's rotating th this way, this is the way the teeth would be facing a piece of wood if it was used as a saw blade, which it was originally manufactured to be used as. And yes, I also think it would tear more of zombie flesh if the teeth were this way around. Thing is, this is no longer mounted on a table saw. This is mounted on an axe and it is not rotating anymore. It's flying through space in a chopping motion, if you will. So there is no rotation going on, right? And also, I don't know about you, but if a zombie or a raider or any other menace is attacking me, I want my ba battle axe to chop as far into the target as possible with as little effort as possible and not get stuck rather than tearing at the flesh. Certainly with sufficient force you could arrange the teeth this way around as well and especially if you sharpen inside the teeth and with sufficient force you could still like chop through a zombie or whatever but it would not be the most efficient use of force because what this really is are counter hooks right here. So it goes into the flesh, into the skin and whatever and just gets stuck. All right? And then it tears, yes, because tearing is basically when it can't get clean through. But I want it to get clean through. When it's this way around, then it hits the target with this tooth then it slides onto the next, slides onto the next, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, I think Scalagrim said that uh, there are no uh, conclusive tests of serrated blades, whether or not they actually perform better at cutting or not. I believe he said that. Uh, I certainly didn't do those tests, so I don't know how this really compares to a non-serrated blade. So if, if I had just removed the teeth, how would that compare uh, to the teeth being there? I don't know. What I do know, or believe, 
firmly is that this doesn't really get stuck that much more than a um, non-serrated blade on its way through the target this way, right? It just slides because the teeth are all pointing in the proper direction for it to go through the target rather than like this and get stuck. Like, I certainly wouldn't want to get hit by either. Like, this would suck, yes. But especially if we're talking about something like a zombie that doesn't feel pain, then we want to just get as deep in as possible and just be done with it. And even if the opponent does feel pain, it's still better to get as uh, deep in as possible and then get out without being stuck, okay? So this is why I arranged the teeth like this. So in those terms, I'm thinking more along the lines of, okay, here is this piece of flat metal with teeth. Um, how can I use it? And not how was it used before in the table saw, but rather like, how can I use it now? And um, yeah, those are basically the same qualities you would want in a medieval battle axe. Same thing. If you're getting attacked by a horde of angry Vikings, same thing. You don't want to tear at their flesh. You want to chop into their skull or whatever. The next thing is the handle that I want to show to you. And it's wrapped in leather. Just uh, did it because I think it looks nice for visual balance. Okay, so this part is not that empty. And I also added this belt here and this belt here. And this one is actually useful. It prevents from uh, sliding out from the hand, which actually makes it really difficult to throw. So if I th try to throw it like this, the release from the hand is kind of problematic. I tried chucking it at a wood stump a couple of times. This is why I got this damage here on the pommel. It didn't hit the uh, right way around. I actually did manage to uh, get it to hit with this side a couple of times, but it didn't get stuck. Uh, some also commented like it looks like a boomerang and would come back to if you throw it. God, I hope not. <laughs> and the couple of times that I did throw it, it luckily did not come back to me. And why would it? I, I know it's meant as a fun comment, of course. But <laughs> really having something like this fly out and then fly back to me, <laughs> that is not a good, a good thought. Uh, do I think this would hold up in the long term? Uh, with some repairs, possibly. But this is not the toughest plywood. And uh, if I really made it just functional and not uh, also cool looking, then I would coat this with a proper coat of uh, primer and uh, sealing stuff and so on and so forth. However you call all those compounds that you put on wood to really preserve it. Okay, I didn't do that here because I just wanted it to look cool and used and abused and post-apocalyptic. Uh, you can also see some damage right here, right? Uh, just a bit of damage from uh, normal use. I don't think it's like really much. This is to be expected from a wooden construction. Now, as for the blade damage, it gets really dull really fast. It's not like a super, uh, super edge retaining steel. It's just not super duper sharp anymore. So I can do this on my finger. It's not, well, proper medieval arms channels would consider it blunt, okay? For me, it's still kind of sharp because if I chop with this, then it would cut wood and stuff like that. So, uh, edge damage and edge bending and stuff, none of that happened here. I don't know if I didn't abuse it enough or if this saw blade steel is actually pretty good at getting back into its original form or not deforming sideways in the first place. I mean, for its original application, which is sawing wood, it does need some edge, uh, um, sorry, some um, profile rigidity or whatever you call it. So it just doesn't flex sideways and stays bent. Makes sense, right? Because you want your cut in the wood to be straight. So that quality is retained from its original purpose, I guess. Uh, I also don't know what kind of steel it is exactly. What I do know is that it does rust pretty fast. You can see some rust spots right here. And... Um, one time I just uh, had, you know, just a bit of liquid on it. I just chucked it into the snow because I wanted to uh, make a cool photo, which didn't look that good, so it didn't. But uh, it did get some water on it, and just like a couple of hours later, it got some uh, cool rust effect on it. So it rusts really, really fast. So if I was using this in the wastelands for real to survive, I would 
probably be maintaining it a lot and avoiding um, water getting on it. But this is realistically the kind of look you would get if you just use it every day. So some rust forms and then it's just wiped off by uh, the means of you pulling it out of the sheath, which I will also show you, uh, and so on and so forth. So the sturdiness of this is okay. The main failing point are those bolts. You will see later in the video I show how it wobbles a bit already. To show that I would need to put it into the wood. I can show it to you right now, but later in the video. The reason for that is that through all those impacts, like those three bolts, they're in the wood, right? And the, I, what I think is happening is the blade uh, gets the shock and it goes into the bolts and bolts push on that relatively soft plywood, which makes the holes bigger in the plywood in which those bolts sit. So I don't think that's actually an easy fix. Now this still will work for a while, okay? It's uh, just not gonna last forever without any repairs or redoing or something like this. All right, let's talk about the sheath. So I can put it back into the sheath like this, just roll it in and I can easily take it out with this kind of a rolling motion. It's not just pulling, it's really rolling. And this sheath is pretty quick and dirty. <laughs> also quite literally, this is a dirt effect here though, made it with paint. Uh, it's made from ABS plastic, two sheets right here, with some more thinner ABS plastic here in the middle, so the blade can't poke out and some bolts holding those two pieces together. And then I attached this carrying loop here. So this is a clip and this goes around the belt that is on the waist. And then this just clips in like this. So it's really universal kind of thing, can be worn on any kind of belt. I can also adjust the length of this by uh, unlocking this clip and sliding it up and down on the fabric here. So it can also accommodate s slimmer or wider belts. So I can use it with whatever really. And also here is a retaining clip. This is some uh, rubber band right here. So a uh, rubberized fabric, so stretch. And it's held in place like this on the bottom of the sheath. So th this bolt holds both sides and when I release it, there is a bit of tension on here. So it immediately, well, if it doesn't get stuck, ouch, and this slapped me on the finger. Sometimes it just goes like poop and goes off. Uh, so now I can pull it out, right? Uh, with this in place, I cannot really pull it out, right? It's, it, it just wants to stay there. Okay, so this is like <laughs> really not giving me the axe. If I release it, there we go. Uh, it still doesn't release very easily, which is a good thing. I mean, even without the clip. When I run around with this, I don't want it to release that easily. So in a situation where I'm just, you know, traveling the wastelands and stuff, um, and no, there is no imminent danger, I would probably just secure it with the clip. But if I know, okay, there could be some uh, zombies, raiders, whatever coming out, I would release the clip like this and then uh, possibly even have my hand here. And this, uh, like if I, if I bump into something, it doesn't release immediately. Like, yes, I could get this caught in a way that makes the X release, but it doesn't happen immediately, okay? And I can pull it out quickly. Like it's most comfortable to grab here and do this and then just grab the handle. That's if I do have time. And if I don't have time, I can pull it out immediately like this. <laughs> You'll see me do this again later in a bit. Okay, so this is the sheath. And it's really, really nice uh, in a way that uh, I barely even notice it. I tried sprinting with it and all. And uh, if it's really hanging on the side and not up out here slapping me in the junk and in the knee, but if it's really on the side, then I can actually barely make it be bothersome, okay? And even if I bypass some obstacles or something, it just goes out of the way. Like, yeah, it could get stuck and all that, but the same can be said for a sword sheath. So I think this is actually a very good solution right here. 
and it's also fun. Ha! And then just put it back in, like this. The primary advantage of this is speed and the amount of punch it packs through that speed for its size. It's pretty fast and it can develop a lot of destructive power with just something like a wrist flick. Like this. So it's extremely fast to accelerate compared to like a wood chopping axe or anything similar. So I really get it stuck with, with just a wrist flick, right? Well, almost. With just a little bit of elbow and it's already stuck. So really the advantage here is the speed. I mean, a couple more chops just for you. Oh, and it's splitting already. Look, I actually split it in half. I'm gonna do that now. Hmm. And actually as I do this, I'm finding that not really putting like all of my body weight behind it and stuff, but instead just focusing on the speed of this is yielding a lot more force at the impact. Yes, this is working a lot better when I'm just trying to go fast instead of going strong, if that makes sense. I'll just take this and bash the zombies on the head like this with a holz block. <laughs> Ninja! Woo! Woo! Ninja! <laughs> when you compare it to something like this, which is a lot heavier on the head, like, this takes some force. Like, this would sure destroy a zombie skull, but this is like, really, ugh, almost dislocated my shoulder here. Okay, we start with this very menacing onion. And what I can also do, by the way, just for fun, I can do a strike directly when I pull the axe out of the sheath, like this. Like Samurai, just a lot more clunky. No. So this was not good, because I did bad edge alignment. It slid off. I need to chop at a more uh, right angle. This should work. Much as expected. This onion is frozen from the inside because it was stored in the shed for many days. And it is really cold out here, so this is actually ice onion. So this is like kind of like chopping through ice. Probably why the first time it didn't work that well. Now let's try with the menacing potato. Thou shall pay for your sins, menacing potato. <laughs> and you, menacing shed. All right, I'll just uh, throw it in the air because it's really, really hard to hit otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that makes better. Yeah. So, mid-air, shave this off. Whatever it says about the axe, I guess it's good if someone's checking potatoes at me. <laughs> and now, the boss of them, the evil coconut. <gasps> and there are tiny holes in here, and here is a tiny nail here to just fixate it in place and the holes are also there because we drained it to drink the coconut milk. Thou shall pay for your crimes as well, evil coconut. No! So the first hit was a fail and again I've had the problem with a too shallow edge alignment so it just glanced off. It did chop in a bit but not chop it in half. So we do it again. That's better. All right, now let's try just uh, chopping a bit of wood with this. And it chops in really nicely, actually. You can see I'm also rushing it out like this sideways. And so far, I think it did not bend permanently. Um, considering this serration here and stuff, and everything else, this actually chops surprisingly well into this wood. Ow! <laughs> 
Snail fail. And now we're stuck with one of the teeth inside of this. So this is of course a disadvantage compared to just a non-toothed axe. Let's try hitting it just like this from the top. <laughs> wow! Look at that! This went really deep with the teeth. Let's see if I can even get it out. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> and now this is absolutely not designed for splitting wood. For splitting wood you need a, a blade that becomes a lot wider, fast. So this is more of a combat axe design. But I'll try this anyway. Mm. Hey, how about this? And I'm gonna grab it here, closer to the pommel, to generate a lot more force. May the force be with you. Ah, <laughs> the shock transmitted to the hand is... Wow. So the forward tilt of the axe will be a lot of help here, but I don't know how the blade will fare. Let's find out. Whoa! Whoa. This is actually a lot better than I expected. Let's chop some more ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah. Whenever I mess up the blade alignment, it twists violently in the hand and it really hurts, so... Ben chucks ice into my face. This is, for whatever reason, actually decent at hacking ice. Let's do one more. Solid chunks. All right, let's uh, see if this board can withstand the power of the axe. I think not. And it goes through. But then again, the problem is it gets stuck and rolling it out this way is impossible because the teeth are opposing it. So the only way is to roll it, roll it out that way. It's getting really, really dangerous here because there is ice forming as we speak. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, there is a little bit of wobble in it between the handle and the blade. You can see it here. Do you see it? It's still holding though, it's not falling apart just yet. But with a construction like this, it would be necessary to repair it once in a while. You can see from up here that if this was an actual full tang that goes all the way through the handle, this would never be a problem. But since it is not, I will need to retighten these screws or bolts and hope that it works. But it still performed a lot better than I thought. I thought I would completely break it. Okay, I hope this episode was interesting for you. And if so, then like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And also join the Nuclear Snail Community Group, which is on Facebook. It's linked in the video description. Also linked in the video description is my Patreon page. 
through which you can support me if you like what I'm doing. My Patreon supporters are the ones who keep this channel going and developing, and I thank them very much. I will see you in the next episode. Until then, hail the snail!